Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about 9 cards that have pretty much plummeted into oblivion in price. These cards used to be not only expensive, but highly, highly in demand. So, let's talk about the first one, Dio Chan, Artful Beauty. Now this card was reprinted, but see, it used to be $75 for a bit of time. And then, see today, the same Portal Free Kingdoms one is only $29. So from $75 to $29. And falling. I don't see a bottom on her anytime soon. She is not a very popular EDH commander anymore. There was a time that all the random red decks with the chaos and blank 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 they all wanted to play her because she was a lot of fun. However, there's so many better options for randomness nowadays that she's kind of obsolete. Next, Chain Lightning, and this card has been reprinted. However, the Legends Edition was $15 at one time. It has since plummeted to 8 and is continuing its downward trend. Chain Lightning is good. It's very good. It's essentially Lightning Bolt as a sorcery with the off chance your opponent could also hit you back with it. Still, free damage for one red is... If you printed this in standard today, it would literally be the best card in standard. Hands down. So, what happened to it? The reprint happened. A lot of cards were only expensive because there was such a limited amount of them. As soon as the amount increased, it turns out that, hey, these cards were only valuable because no one else had them. And that's the main objective of reprinting, is to make these cards reasonable, make them cheaper, and that's what, that's what happened. Vindicate, another card that until recently, until its recent reprint, was quite expensive. We are talking, looks like almost $30, $28, $29 expensive. This was the only reason you would ever open a booster pack of Apocalypse. There's really not much else in Apocalypse that I can remember, but Vindicate, since Apocalypse was in standard, was one of the best cards. And now it is $7 for the original Apocalypse version of it. It's a huge, huge plum in price. Like, I cannot imagine a $7 original Apocalypse Vindicate. I, 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 it's incredible, right? This is a card that I've always associated with over $20 since... Even when it was in standard, it was like $15 or $20 and never lost value. It's always been very, very good. But due to how strong some new cards are, due to the reprint, it just collapsed. So Sneak Attack, the Urza Saga edition, used to be almost $75. It has since dropped 66% to about $27.55. It has fallen out of favor of the EDH. Uh, not EDH. It's still good in EDH. It's fallen out of favor from Legacy. The sneak and show decks are not as prevalent. Uh, they are being outmatched. But, I mean, look at this card. Original Urza Saga Sneak Attack. $27. That's very tempting. It's very tempting because you know this card has a home in a dragon deck. It even has a dragon in it. It's telling you, buy me. Buy me. I would say, if you don't have one of these, buy the original Urza Saga. And it did get reprinted, so that's why the price has gone down. In addition to it falling out of favor. But the meta can always change. I, I like strong cards. And a lot of times people don't, can, they cannot... My definition of a strong card is something that... I view as huh, either unique or it's very pushed. Talking about crazy card prices, this one is still over 118, but one time it was 270, 280. 
this is the foil copy of her. Now, every single foil, I believe, is this ghost foil, which is nice, but at $118, it still will pay your box and then some. You can get Conspiracy Take the Crown boxes for $80, $75 right now. I think $75 on David Adams, I saw that. I bought in at 80 and then the next day it was on 75 on the same website. I was like, oh, come on. But uh, yeah, that was not good. That was not, I have a lot of conspiracy to take the crown. I'm going to open some of it. Uh, I, liked, I like the set. I'm skeptical. I guess you can say I'm skeptical as to the future value of it. I know a lot of people are hyping it up. I just too much of it. There's just too much of it. And when you can buy a box of 75, I mean, what do you hope the contents of the box will be? More than 75? Not happening. Tamagoy for the 2015, but we could also pick the Modern Masters original. Over 160 bucks, and now it is 88, so it's dropped about 50%. Percent. Uh, and I love it. Uh, this is what a reprint is, and it really does punish. So I've been punished, right? So I'm going to be open and say this. I own more than four Tamagoyfs at one time. I own eight. Did I really need eight Tamagoyfs? No, because I use the same sleeves, right? So I could, I mean, I guess like maybe I play test it or something. But regardless, I did not need to own eight Tamagoyfs because now I own four, and it has not impacted my enjoyment of Magic the Gathering whatsoever. Now, you can multiply this by abrupt decays. All these cards that have been reprinted, I have owned. Now, some cards have really gone up, like Phylia. Obviously, I have a massive collection of her. And every day, it seems like she goes up a few cents. Uh, and Malera also was very good. It all bounces out, but I'm here to tell you, like, mm, it was Tamagoyz. Next, here is a card. I think this card is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful cards in all of Magic. If she drops, I mean, yes, she was reprinted. Let's go ahead and say why she dropped in price. She was reprinted. But if she drops any more to $5, I will start collecting her. And I will make a concerted effort to collect her. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you guys before I'm telling you guys before that right, right now I own no copies of her well I own one copy but it's a altered copy I own one singleton copy of her for my EDH deck but if she drops to five the original urge I'm sure you can buy some of her for five but I mean like if she goes on mass like the store has like 10 of her I will go buy her. Another card that if it drops to five, I will be all over. Avacyn. This card hit, I want to say, mm, looks like 50. It looks like it hit 50 at one time. And now it's back down to $7 and declining rapidly. She will probably hit her floor at five. But she's a mythic angel. If anything is true, mythic angels tend to do very well long-term wise. Because there's a bunch of casual players who look at Avison and they like her. They really like her. And I would not, I would be down to collect Avisons. Actually, you know what? I should make a video of all the cards I'm going to try to collect. I have seven cards in mind that I haven't begun, so I'm going to be open. I have not begun collecting and buying. But should they hit their price points where I feel comfortable buying in, I will buy in. Because I cannot imagine Avacyn at a $5. Like, I just doesn't, it's so strange. Now, see the best Avacyn? No. But she's still an Avacyn. And then Nyssa. Nyssa is, keeps dropping, but this is a good card. I don't know. Like, it's just very good in EDH. It does everything I want it to do. It protects herself. It allows, you know, you to untap stuff. And then it's just overall a very solid green planeswalker. And it's been time. M15 was a while ago. I'm assuming, yes, yeah, 2015 does. So it was two years ago. Give her a little more age. 
and this card is clearly an over $10 card. I don't know why it keeps falling in price. It doesn't make any sense to me. But at one time, she was a $40 card. That's crazy. That's crazy. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.